Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers, and in this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. Wait a minute, what does this have to do with complex numbers? Let's see what happens. We have cosine of z equals square root of 2, and we're going to be solving for z values. Now, we're going to be looking at a couple of things including some graphs and some results from or from alpha. But before that, let's go ahead and use the famous Pythagorean identity. Sine squared z plus cosine squared z is equal to 1. If cosine z is equal to root 2, when I square it, I'm getting 2 from there. So this implies sine squared z is equal to negative 1. Wait a minute. Is that possible at all? Yes. Not in the real world but in a different world, which is called the complex world, this is quite possible. So the problem is kind of hidden as it is, but when you go to sign, you're going to get different um, cases from here. Not the same cases, but uh, it's kind of more clear. And obviously, from here, you can kind of split it up into sine of z is equal to i or negative i plus minus i, so on and so forth. But what is that supposed to mean, right? So let's go ahead and stick to cosine because at least the right-hand side is a real value and try to find the values of z from here. Before that, though, I want to show you a graph. Wait a minute, what is this? The graph of cosine z and the graph of y equals root 2. Wait a minute, there, there are no intersection points. Of course, because there are no real solutions. The maximum value for cosine is 1 in the real world. Cosine cannot exceed that in the real world again. That's why root 2 is going to be outside the real world. Make sense? Okay, great. So that's one way to look at it. And the solutions from, from alpha, by the way, the graph was also from there. But wait a minute. Does this make sense at all? It says the cosine inverse or arc cosine of root 2. But wait a minute. What is arc cosine of root 2? That's what we're going to try to explore. So let's see how we can solve this problem in the complex world. In general, whenever you're given cosine z, you can basically turn this into an exponential. Thanks to Euler, Euler gave us a really cool formula, and I think it's one of the coolest identities that we have. And Euler's formula basically goes like this. Cosine of z plus i tau times sine of z. Wait a minute, wasn't that theta? Wait a minute, you can replace theta with anything. can be written as e to the power i z. This is kind of like the comple complex exponentiation, and obviously you can pretty much replace z with anything you want, including theta, and it can be real too. Okay, and if z is i, notice that we get e to the power i squared, which is real. Anyways, that's a different story. I think I talked about it before. Now, we can, of course, replace z with negative z, but cosine is even, so it's not going to care, but sine cares about negatives, so we're going to get the following. And by adding these two equations, you can get rid of the i sine z and end up with 2 cosine z, and after division by 2, you get the following identity, which I think is super duper awesome, or beautiful, gorgeous, whatever you want to call it. This is great. So now, we're going to use this identity to solve this problem. Let's go ahead and replace cosine z with that, because if we just use cosine z, cosine inverse of negative, I mean, root 2 is not really going to give us much, unless we use a calculator, which is pointless. We should solve this. Now, I'm going to set this equal to root 2, because that's what the original equation is asking for. And now, we're going to use the exponential function, the complex exponential. But what is e to the power i z? This is the reciprocal, so let's go ahead and call this w, because it's just another complex number, isn't it? So now we get w plus 1 over w equals 2 root 2. And the next step, multiply both sides by w. The power of substitution is awesome, right? And then we're going to solve for w. w squared plus 1 equals 2 root 2w. And then we can kind of put everything on the same side and then use the quadratic formula. Or you can complete the square if you want. No big deal. Uh, you're just going to have to add, I think, half of 2 root 2 squared. And that will be 2 to both sides. In other words, you just need to add 1 to both sides and then solve for it, but let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula anyways. That's more fun. So negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is going to give us 8, minus 4. Wait a minute. Is w a real number? Maybe it is. Who knows, right? And we're going to divide it by 2. 
Now, square root of 4 is 2, so this is going to give us w equals 2 root 2 plus minus 2 divided by 2, and this just root 2 plus minus 1. Interesting, right? Well, w is not the end goal, because w is just e to the power iz, which makes z sort of complex, right? Let's see what happens. So we're going to set w equal to e to the iz. And if I just go off with one of the values, let's just stick to root 2 plus 1. How do we solve for z from here? Easy. We're going to use the natural log, which is the inverse function for the exponential, right? So we can hopefully uh, get to work from here. Let's go ahead and natural log both sides. And this is going to be the answer. And now we're just going to bring the iz to the front. That's going to give us iz. ln e is 1. ln root 2 plus 1. And then we're going to divide both sides by i. Or I would like to multiply both sides by negative i, which makes more sense. Because i times negative i is going to be negative i squared. And that would actually be a positive one. So I can totally forget about this. And this is going to be the answer. So z is going to be negative i times ln root 2 plus 1. Make sense? So in other words, my answer will be an imaginary number. And I was looking for z, right? So if I plug this in, I should be getting root 2 from here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the other solution. Of course, there's another one, but that just replaces root 2 plus 1 with root 2 minus 1. So the other solution is just going to be negative i times ln root 2 minus 1. By the way, you could also do the following. You could just use a plus minus sign because root 2 plus 1 and root 2 minus 1 are reciprocals. So their product is 1. So you can replace one of them with 1 over the other. And then that will bring a negative 1 to the front, so on and so forth. Makes sense? So in other words, you can write z as plus minus i times ln root 2 plus 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.